What's up, bros and broettes? If you guys pay attention to the videos, in the last video, which you should go back and watch, it was pretty cool, I caught a nine pound, 12 ounce giant on a little tiny bait. And that's really been the theme since we've been down in Florida. They've been eating small stuff, but it was a weird presentation. Something very different from what I normally do and sort of, I would say like kind of a, a secret way to fish a Ned that, that really doesn't get talked about, but a lot of people do it. And that's swimming a Ned. And there's a lot of different ways to do it. And it's a super functional technique. You can do it from stuff like docks, like right over there, to brush piles, to even under tree falls, just like this. And basically incorporates using a net, and you can skip it under the docks, skip it under the trees, you can throw it to brush pile structures, you can do all those things, and instead of dragging it back, super finesse, shaking it super slow like you normally do, you actually kind of reel it, and for lack of a better word, I'd say you fish it like a swim bait, and most comparably to the way you'd fish like a Kitek or a small like 2.8, 3.3 inch, you know, basically like a two to three inch Kitek or swim bait style bait on like a ball head, a finesse kind of swim bait presentation for like spots, small mouth and that. But what I'm gonna show you today, we really didn't go into the in-depth of exactly how to do it, exactly how to set it up, and, and what it's doing, why it works, what the bait does, and what makes it different from any other way to either fish a net or even a swim bait or anything along those lines. So in this video, I'm going to, once again, real fishing. I'm gonna show you literally how to do it. We're going to go do it. In a second here, I'm gonna show you how to rig it up, what kind of setup to use to throw it, and hopefully we're gonna catch some fish. So hit that like and subscribe button. I'm gonna show you a technique that does not get talked about, but absolutely kills it. So let's talk about setting up for this technique because I actually literally have to rig up. I broke off my Ned, so it's a perfect opportunity to show you guys exactly what I'm using and how it's set up. For this situation, there's really two Neds you can do this with, and we've talked about it in past videos. There is the Nichols, um, this is the JTK, or the JT Kenny Mag Ned rig, and then there's also the Power Ned. And like we've talked about in other videos, there's two different reasons to use either one. One is you're fishing around cover, or you're skipping. Now if I go, I showed you guys that dock over there. If I went and wanted to do this like skipping a dock, so I skip it under and I sort of slow reel and pulse it out, I'd probably want to use the power Ned just because it has that screw lock on it and you're not going to get any slippage. And usually, you know, slip, um, skipping a bait is, is sort of a high impact sort of process or technique. Um, so when you, you skip using say your standard Ned like the Nichols or any other Ned, the bait slips down after a while or even if you you get a fish or if you get hung on something or if you bounce against something it tends to slip the bait down and it gets a little annoying and you lose that kind of rhythm so if I was fishing like super heavy stuff or skipping under trees or something like that I definitely use the power net in this situation we are fishing a structure um, there's some kind of like garbage down on the bottom but at the same time we're really fishing over that structure we're never really fishing in the structure so I've chosen this guy uh, two reasons one there's a smaller brush guard and I'm almost fishing it like a hair jig, so these fish are just kind of swiping at it. So I want less protection on the hook so I don't miss fish. It also has a little smaller hook so it's easier for them to get in their mouth. And it's a smaller hook also because I'm throwing it on a 610 KS2 Elite. I'm throwing it on this guy with a Daiwa Eliminator. Um, basically, it's my Kitex setup, which we mentioned in the last video. This is exactly what I'd throw like a ball head finesse jig setup on. So I have eight pound test right here, and I'm going to go ahead and tie this thing on um, this is so Nichols does weird sizes this is approximately a quarter ounce I think it's a hair less I want to say it's a 3 16 um, and I'm gonna be fishing this in anywhere from 15 to about 22 feet of water so that kind of gives you an idea obviously you need to vary which head you're using um, depending on how deep but I'm gonna tie a little Palomar knot give it a lick and tighten it down if you are fishing docks um, even if they're deep docks, I'd recommend going down to an eighth ounce unless they're super deep docks like like 35 foot kind of docks. Uh, the reason being the whole trick to this technique and the whole concept behind it is you're catching fish that are a little more suspended than the rest. You know, if you were just trying to get to the bottom pretty quick or get a reaction and, and just get down there, you, you know, you, there's a million other baits you could use, a, a jig, a, a stick bait on a Texas rig, things along those lines. But in this instance, we're trying to present a, a less 
sort of obtrusive technique, a less obtrusive presentation, a smaller, more compact finesse presentation. And we're trying to keep it up in the water column because these fish, they're, they're either related to bait that's up, which is the situation that we're gonna try to tap into in a minute, or they're under a dock or under trees like this back behind us, and they're relating to that cover that's above them or that shade. So you want that bait to stay higher in the water column, even if the water is a bit deeper. So what I'm gonna put on the back of this thing is pretty standard. I have a Gambler Fat Ace. Any kind of stick bait will work. Um, my two main ones that I use are a Fat Ace. Actually, well, the Ace and Fat Ace, they're pretty much the same baits. One's six inch, one's five inch. So pretty much same stick style bait. And then I also use a Domeki Stinger, which is also a stick bait, but it has a little bit different uh, shape to it. It's, a, it's got a little more of a torpedo shape with a pointed sort of icicle tail. But when it comes to this Ace, I'm gonna find the worm sack and I'm going to cut it right in the middle of the worm sack, just like that. And I wanna use the side that has the pointed tail, especially for this, um, this application. I think the pointed tail, and I think one of the keys to this presentation is the sort of wag you get as it falls. Just like a Kitek has a boot tail, and that boot tail kind of slowly kind of kicks as you suspend it or as it pendulums down. In this case, I think the, the real draw is you can even see it as I move the bait, is how this tail shakes when you sort of swim bait, or I'm sorry, uh, hair jig it, and you sort of pendulum and sort of suspend that bait down. Basically, you stop reeling and kind of let that bait pendulum down on a semi-taut line. So I'm, it's pretty simple. I'm gonna just slide this thing on just like we normally do, and I measured where my hook's gonna come out, which is approximately there. I'm going to slide it on, and a little trick I'll tell you with the nickels, the nickels has a little wire um, keeper on there, and it's right about there. If you press down on that, what that does is it pushes it into the plastic and just gives you a little bit extra hold. As I mentioned, with the nickels, I love this jig, but the baits do slide down, so you gotta kinda accommodate that a little bit. But Obviously, this is pretty much your standard Ned rig. I could go around and cast this and drag it on the bottom just as much as I can do the technique that I'm about to show you. And it's pretty standard. I got a green pumpkin one on there because we're fishing around brim. Now, one thing to kind of throw into your sort of mindset when you're picking a soft plastic, don't be afraid of using white. Don't be afraid of using sort of your, your smoke and your, your glimmer patterns. Because oftentimes too, your fish might be eating shad, they might be eating little glass minnows. You sort of match the hatch. It's a finesse presentation. So approach it just like you'd approach any kind of finesse Ned presentation. That's her. That's her. That's a big one. Oh dear. Yeah. See how I just kind of like let it fall and you know, I went to lift and you don't know if you're kind of like hung on the bottom or if it's her, like this. <laughs> I, they just suck it up. There was never a bite. There was never any indication. I got you in the mouth and dude, they're Chonkawonkasauruses. <laughs> Goodbye. So let's do this technique, guys. I'm going to show you the retrieve here real quick. What we have is there's a, a structure out here. There's a bunch of fish suspended over it. And I have my Ned. Just that little, I think it's 316 with that little fat ace on it. And I got on my 610 little finesse spinning rod. I'm going to give it a slang out there. I'm going to cast it quite a ways past the object or past the structure because in this context, you know, I'm not fishing like under a dock where I skip it under the dock. I'm, I'm literally trying to go over it and there's fish all around it. So even though normally, you know, you'd want to focus on the structure, I'm trying to focus on this broad area because it is, it is a reeling style retrieve or, or presentation. So you're not dragging to hit this, this one little corner of this one little piece of stuff. So I'm gonna let it get all the way to the bottom and that might be the last time that it's on the bottom. My line went slack and you can see, I'm just gonna do this slow retrieve. Like I said, a lot of you guys who have watched the spotted bass videos that I've done with the Kitex, this is my retrieve with that Kitex. I'm just pointing the rod at the bait and swimming it back and then every once in a while, I'm just gonna stop. 
my line's semi-taut and that bait's gonna kind of just slowly dart down to the bottom. In this context, I'm not gonna let it get all the way to the bottom. I'm gonna let it sink for a second and then I'm gonna continue just doing my slow roll kind of reeling presentation. And I'm just trying to keep it up. These fish have been above or suspended above a lot of the, the structures that I fish. And I'm just trying to show them something a little different than the hair jig, a little finesse and like a soft plastic. I got a bunch of people partying next to me too. It's kind of amusing, dude. But it's, I'm just slow rolling it through there. I'll pause and let it kind of pendulum back down to the bottom. And usually that's when you get your bite, either on the retrieve or when you make that pause and that bait slowly pendulums towards the bottom. That's usually when they eat it. When you swim this through the water, all that really happens is maybe you get a little bit of shake with the tail as you're reeling it, but overall, it's it sort of just darts, it not very quickly, but it sort of darts and just comes through the water in a very straight way, which is very comparable to the way a hair jig like fishes and swims. There's not much action to it. The hair jig has a little bit of flare because of the hair on there. And this has a little bit of flare because the tail does just a little bit of, of, of shake or a little bit of kind of waddling as you as you swim it but there's very little gait to it it's it's not wide it doesn't you know s back and forth like a spook you don't get much i don't know variance from the trajectory that you have with it when you're reeling it in the other cool thing is when you stop reeling which is exactly what we're doing we're basically casting it out reeling it and then we'll stop we won't give it any slack or anything like that but we'll stop this thing sort of glides to the bottom just kind of and the tail does a little bit of a shake, but then on the bottom, it ends up landing just about like that. It sort of kind of stands on the bottom just like a Ned would. And it's super, it's a super do nothing look. And you'd think, you know, for summer, for fall, you know, the water's still a little bit warm. You'd want a little more displacement. But the ironic part about, especially late summer fishing and fall fishing, is it seems like these fish kind of turn into more of a, a sort of a negative or a neutral mode. And you're forced to sort of turn back to a lot of the more finesse presentations you used in early to mid spring to get these fish to bite. But it has a really cool action. It's a really do nothing action. It's just a straight, simple swimming. And I think that's what draws them and what makes it so easy to sort of fish this in different water columns because it's not moving beyond what you think it's moving. It's simply swimming in a straightforward manner. And when you stop that retrieve, it's just pendling down and sort of diving at a very gradual sort of manner back down to the bottom and, and presenting that same Ned presentation where it stands up or stands at a little angle on the bottom that draws bites. That's her. Don't even know she's hooked yet. In the wind, storm's rolling up. That's a big gentleman. That's a big. Please stay on there. Oh God, and she come off. Oh, that hurts my feelings a whole bunch. Well, the wind and the weather had a little different plan for us today, to say the least. But I hope you guys got the gist. Let me show you the storm that's coming. See that? That's a giant wall of rain. It hasn't thundered yet, so I ain't going nowhere. But I hope you got the gist of it. Swimming in Ned, super versatile. I love like like techniques or baits that you can use in a multiple sort of variation manner because they've become a lot more functional and it's a lot less annoying to have one tied up on the deck because that one bait, that one rig, does like 27 things. So give it a try. It's a great finesse way to attack suspended fish as well as fish that I don't know, they're, they're just not in the mood for your standard suspended fish presentations like we talked about, spinner bait, swim bait, hair jig, 
and it's a fun way to catch them. Catching them on light line, catching them on a soft rod is super cool. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I'm gonna go dodge this storm and see if I can catch a few more BASSs. Tight lines, we'll see you back out on the water or talking fishing.